I'm Elise Anderson with this Think Tech Commentary. If anyone doesn't know, that is if anyone's still living in the Stone Age without a smartphone, radio, TV, or computer, the whole state of Hawaii woke up today at 8.07 a.m. to an emergency alert sent to all cell phones in the state reading in boldface type, Ballistic missile threat inbound to Hawaii. Seek immediate shelter. This is not a drill. There are better ways to start a weekend off than for everyone in paradise to jump out of bed thinking they're about to die. In 18 minutes, that is. It took 38 minutes for Hawaii Civil Defense to finally issue a second text through the same line confirming the false alarm. Until then, I gathered bits of information through various phone lines and Twitter posts, mostly saying not to fret, but I feared all of those could have just been attempts to quell panic. I wasn't about to rest until I heard it from the same source who'd issued the alarm in the first place. Why on earth did it take so long? In 38 minutes, people could have jumped out of buildings, preferring to die quickly rather than slowly burn to death. Someone I know did overdose on pills and now can't attend the Sony Open today. Another person ripped out her blood draw at the doctor's office because she didn't want to die with needles in her arms. I'm just thankful I haven't heard worse. The delay was indeed inexcusable. Where were you when it happened? I was in the midst of a deep second sleep when someone frantically barged into my room and woke me up. Telepathically enough, I'd spent much of the night dreaming about, wait for it, nuclear war. Yes, I'd been dreaming that our world went up in bombs and blazes right before the apocalyptic text arrived. Of course, it was surreal to wake up and find my dream about Armageddon had become reality. I doubt Walt Disney has this situation in mind when he tells us, to the tune of fireworks at the happiest place on Earth, dreams do come true. And how did you react when you first got the text? Never again need any of us respond hypothetically when asked, what would you do if you had 15 minutes left to live? Now you know exactly what you do because whatever it would be is exactly what you did today. When I started frantically searching the net, I couldn't find a thing. Like I said, I suspected the news was deliberately quiet to avoid panic when we'd have been dead meat regardless. Radio and police phones were completely tied up. No one I called knew anything for sure, but Michael W. Perry was saying on KSSK when he finally said anything at all about it that the message was a glitch within civil defense, an internal drill accidentally leaked external, and with the added typo not. <laughs> not such a minor typo, was it? Or was it Kim Jong-un? So there it is. It happened and we survived. Now we have a choice. We can indeed be angry, demand whomever made the typo be fired, and complain about civil defense's inexcusable lags. Those are legitimate reactions, but for your own sake, I suggest another one. As a late friend of mine once said, let's all just be grateful, hey. Unlike my late friend, you and I are now still alive. My friends, we have at least another day. I hope you go out there and live it as fully as you possibly can.